Hi. So <clears throat> my research, uh, the one that I'm presenting today, <clears throat> is about uh, machine-generated data and <clears throat> sorry, how we can use them in productive ways to share them for, uh, for science, for research purposes. Uh, firstly, we have to admit that data is everywhere. We produce data with everything that we do in our lives, being in our, in our professional lives, in our work environments, in our personal lives, in our uh, social interactions, in our interactions with the state, uh, in everything uh, that, we, uh, that we do in our life. Everything produces uh, some type of content, some type of data. And in, in a lot of cases, in a lot of uh, these interactions, it has been admitted that um, this data can be used for uh, innovation purposes, for research, to maximize knowledge, to produce new content, um, <coughs> <coughs> and and promote um, innovation. So in that in that context of uh, of sharing and openness, uh, a lot of in the past 20 years, a lot of different types of uh, private and uh, private uh, initiatives, tools, policies, uh, activities. Um, uh, have been uh, developed, such as, for example, you have the Creative Commons licenses that uh, were developed uh, quite some time ago, uh, 15 years ago, um, in order to promote uh, the sharing of content, data uh, involved in databases. We have open knowledge uh, that promotes uh, openness in, in government data, transparency in the way that, that the, uh, the government um, uh, produces and uh, uh, produces data. We have uh, in the research uh, area we have uh, open access movement, open access to scientific pub publications. We have open uh, open access to research data. We have open research data. We have uh, open science. The way that we do science is in in an open way and a transparent way. And so in this um, in this um, in this general uh, context of sharing and openness uh, and everything open uh, when it comes to data. Um, there are specific cases that still present uh, a lot of problems that are still resisting uh, for, for different ways. Um, so to go back to, um, to, to, to the ways that we produce data, uh, there is a new, um, a, new, um, a, a new way, a new technology that we have been using uh, more and more in our everyday lives that produces a mass amount of data and that comes from uh, machines. So we have, for example, uh, connect connected cars, uh, it has been shown that, for example, for every hour, uh, a driving hour of a fully connected car, um, uh, 25 gigabytes of data are produced and they're uploaded and stored to the cloud, so uh, to a privately held cloud of, of, uh, of a company. We have uh, smart thermostats, smart grid for smart energy, we have smart houses that uh, measure anything from energy consumption to temperature of, how of our homes uh, or other use in our houses. And also, uh, regardless of, of, um, of our personal lives, we also have uh, 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 things, uh, smart things that, also, uh, that are applied in, uh, in market. For example, in agriculture, we have smart farming um, uh, sensors that, uh, for example, measure uh, irrigation uh, techniques. They measure uh, so th so they measure soil samples, um, humidity, temperature, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to automate um, some some uh, some farming methods. So here you see, for example, an irrigation robot that has been developed. The common denominator in all these examples that I've been using um, is that um, they produce what we what I've been what I've been um, I'm going to explain. That is machine-generated, non-personal data. So machine-generated data are data that are created by computer processes. They are created, they're collected by sensors, by machine, by equipment, without the human input, without someone actually uh, inputting the data in a database. They're, they're mostly produced uh, by the, the material objects that we use in our everyday lives, by the, what we call the Internet of Things, so uh, all the smart things that we use, from smart watches to smart houses uh, to smart cars and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And the Internet of Things, uh, every material object that belongs to the Internet of Things uh, uh, has um, an automated collection uh, of user data um, in order to, uh, as, a, as an ultimate goal, to give, uh, maximize the, the, the user experience, to make uh, a better user experience and the, prov and the services provided. Um, they are, this, these data are very interesting for in, a, in a lot of ways, but mostly because they, produce, uh, they are produced in mass amounts and also because uh, in a lot of cases they are non-personal. So, for example, take the, um, the, farming, um, the farming example, a lot of data, but non, uh, seemingly innocuous data. So, 
why should scientists care? Why should uh, why 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 do do science uh, do scientists want to 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 interact with this data? Uh, first of all, because of data science, uh, giving the mass amount of data that well, data is the, the raw material that science is used to 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 perform to produce knowledge, and given the mass amount of data that we have already uh, in our possession. Uh, research can be done in an inverse way. So we do not start by the hypothesis, but also we can start by the resource that, uh, when it's analyzed and processed, can produce unexpected results. Maybe some patterns can evolve that are um, uh, very difficult to, to, be, um, to be identified by the human eye. So for this, like for this, for this region, obviously, uh, the machine-generated data is a, is a great candidate to perform data science. Also for other reasons, for example, um, a lot of privately held data could be used uh, very easily for the social good, for, for example, pre preventing disasters, uh, preventing the spread of a lot of urgencies, diseases, etc. And also for training the algorithms that al ultimately uh, come back to be the decision-making algorithms that affect our, uh, our society uh, and our everyday um, lives. So for all these reasons, scientists do want access to, to this data. They want to interact um, uh, meaningfully with the data to produce knowledge. Um, but what is the problem? And why, do we, wh why, why is this being discussed right now? First of all, because all, the, all these machine generated data are privately held. They are fragmented, meaning that uh, they are held by different companies. They are held in different ways, in different qualities, in different standards, in different formats. And Second of all, companies don't have to share the data because they see the market value behind it, which is absolutely acceptable, and everyone sees the market value behind it. And also because they don't want to, because if wanting to, uh, sharing the data implies that they need to put money and effort into standardizing the data, um, producing them in a format that would be accessible for scientists, and also because sometimes there are rights involved, there are intellectual property rights involved, or simply contractually, con contractual ownership. They, uh, they, uh, the companies put the, um, put the data behind uh, specific, con uh, specific uh, contracts that, that uh, prevent uh, the open sharing of, of this data. <coughs> In the European level, um, the European legislative body has accepted and um, declared the, um, the, the potential that this data could have for uh, um, uh, for producing knowledge, for innovation, and uh, for the greater societal good. And so, in the context of the digital single market um, and the, the, the promoting the, the creation of a European data harmonized economy, um, it has also been uh, accepted that there should be data sharing principles uh, involved in privately held data to promote, to help scientists get access uh, to this machine generated data. So, but how do we do this? How do we fix this? We have accepted that this is a need, that there is a need of on both sides, but how do we fix this? There are two ways. Well, three, but two big categories. One is uh, the legislative body. Whether, um, uh, why they find the regulation that exists right now and try to bend it in ways that will be uh, useful for us, or we invent uh, new types of legislation that will help researchers get access, or uh, also we develop practices. In practice, find ways that uh, companies and researchers can proactively uh, collaborate. First of all, for the existing, f when it comes to the existing legislative um, ways uh, that we can use, there is data mining. So data mining is the process of examining uh, big data sets in order to recognize patterns, derive knowledge, uh, and make, um, um, make analysis of data that is very, very difficult to do uh, with only the human eye, with a single uh, human input. So data mining in the European Union, when there is copyright involved, uh, up until, the, um, up until this point was considered a uh, copyright violation. So you, cannot, you could not do it because it's, it violates the copyright of, uh, of the database uh, holder of the rights holder. Right now, in the, in the copyright reform that is being um, done in the European Union level, we have developed um, uh, uh, an exception to copyright. So giving uh, researchers the, uh, the, um, the, um, the way to, uh, the permission to, to perform data mining operations without the, ho the copyright holder being able to tell them, no, you cannot do, do this, I have the copyright. So this is uh, a, very, a very useful tool for researchers and something that is very, very, um, a very, very positive sign but it's not the end of the story because sometimes there is no copyright involved. For example, in a lot of data, there's just no copyright. It's just, they're just behind contracts and there is nothing that we can do. 
So in practice, what we do, sometimes uh, we have the da data, co data collaboratives. So uh, some, some companies, because of, the, um, because of the nature of the data that they use, they, rec they perform, th well, they, th they develop some sort of what we call social responsibility. They voluntarily share data, they create platforms to, s to share data for research purposes and uh, for the benefit of, of the public and social good. But again, this is something uh, based on an initiative and it's not something that is uh, mandatory for any company or that is a generalized uh, practice. Finally, to go back to the legislative uh, solution, uh, very recently in France there was uh, the Digital Republic Bill that came into law that um, um, introduced the notion of public interest data. So public interest data is data that um, present, uh, because of their nature, they present, they present a, specific, um, um, a specific goal that can serve the public interest. So uh, the legislative body has um, um, determine some conditions in ways to say that to private companies that you should open this data to the public for specific purposes. For example, let's say meteorological data or um, uh, perform, uh, perform operations for statistics, uh, etc. So where does that leave us? What, what can we actually do right now uh, to, to, to help researchers? Uh, well, the classic response is, al is as always that it depends. It depends on the data. Uh, because there we cannot find a, no, uh, a one-size-fits-all solution because there is a vast uh, diversity in, what, uh, in the data that are produced. One way that we could solve this problem, and I think that uh, this is the, uh, the, 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 the safest route that we can get, is to recognize that even for non-personal data, there are data that are produced that involve literal risk, for example, uh, the, the sensor data from smart far farming, traffic data, environmental data, uh, or maybe even, um, um, maybe even energy consumption data that involve little risk when they are, involved, when they are shared. So uh, let's start from these data sets and f try to find solutions somewhere in between uh, the, the legislative solutions and also practical solutions to bring together uh, companies and, and, uh, and researchers, and then uh, uh, advance forward to, de to data sets that have uh, more uh, an elevated risk factor, uh, which is, um, well, the, 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 the hardest example would be uh, wearables, so smartwatches, uh, everything that relates to health, even if they are anonymized, they're technically non-personal data, but still they involve a high risk when uh, shared, and so there should be very, uh, th there must be a, a stricter framework in how, uh, how we're gonna share that data. And yeah, this is, yeah, this is the end of my presentation. <laughs>